Hey Tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel and right now we are about to jump into another boss talk. So for anybody that's new, hi, hello and welcome. This vlog is actually a interview with a boss that uses crochet as part of their income. So it's part of the C2C series, Crochet to Cash. So far we have had the boss that is Rosina come on to HGDC to talk about submitting to a magazine to have your design featured. And we've also spoken to Nicola of The Secret Crocheter who is a full time crocheter. Like, I don't know what her title is but that's what I'm calling her. Crochet is her full time gig and she makes her wages from that and that one was truly inspiring. Both have been really, really informative, really, really motivating, and I will make sure that I link them wherever I can for you and definitely in the description below. And today, we are going to have a chat with Kalisha of the Quirky Monday podcast. So Kalisha, I asked her to come on because I wanted to talk all things of starting a YouTube channel, diversity, and we had a really good chat um much longer than what you're used to on here but i know that kalisha likes a long like a decent episode and we have given that to you so happy watching tribe and i'll catch you at the end hi kalisha welcome to hgdc hello <laughs> thank you for having me this is pretty cool welcome. you're most welcome so as you know i'm running a series um Crochet to Cash, C to C as it's been nicknamed, and I've got a series of bosses coming on, and you are a boss, and they are talking about their experience with whatever way of making income, whether it's a small income for yarn or side hustle or bigger full-time income, um, using yarny goodness. I'm always surrounded by yarn, and um, <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> And so I thought I would ask you to come on. I thought you might say no, actually. Um, like literally, I was like, hmm, we'll see. Um, to talk about your YouTube channel and what it's like starting one. And then like, I think there's a bit of a misconception of how much we might make from our channels. So we'll definitely like fall over the lid on that a little bit. <laughs> um, so do you want to introduce yourself and all about your YouTube channel? Sure. So my name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online <laughs> <laughs> as Nadira Tani. Um, and my podcast or my craft cast, as I call it, is Quirky Monday Craft Cast. Um, I call it a craft cast because I do a lot of things. Yeah. So, yep. I do a lot of things, right? And and you will see me kind of going through the different um, crafts or um, art forms that I dabble in. Um, I love learning things. So a lot of times I will be like, oh, I'm going to learn how to do embroidery. And then I just dive headfirst in it because I believe if you watch one YouTube video, you're a professional. That's not true at all. <laughs> but it's a good way to approach things. So, um, yeah, I like doing a lot of things. Uh, my main craft right now, or my main maker outlet right now is definitely the yarn. So crocheting and knitting. Um, yeah. And, and I am falling down the plant rabbit hole, uh -huh. as you can see. <laughs> That is definitely a, a side effect of quarantine. These are my friends now. Yeah. We hang out. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess I can talk a little bit about why I started the podcast. Um, like a lot of people who start podcasts, a lot of times in the first episode, you'll hear people say like, oh, you know, I've been watching podcasts and it looked like fun. So I decided to jump in. Um, that is also why I started the podcast. But hand in hand with that wanting to participate was wanting to see myself represented. 
Um, that's a big thing that I focus on in my making in the choices that I make as a crafter. Um, I specifically look for other makers of color um, to signal boost them to um, like use their products to buy their yarn, to buy their patterns, you know, things like that and try to use my platform like that. Um, I, I started watching podcasts a few years ago and it was, it was an experience that I've had quite a lot of going into a certain arena of something that I'm interested in and not seeing anyone that looks like me. And so then that automatically made me feel like, well, is this something that like black people don't do, which is kind of frustrating because obviously if I do it, I can't be the only black person doing this. So there have to be other ones out there is the way that I think about things a lot. Um, so I started looking, I started looking for um, other black people in the fiber sphere and it has been a trial <laughs> finding us. So I always want to try to make things a little bit easier for anyone who's coming behind me. So I wanted to put out, you know, videos and content from my perspective, you know. Um, one of the things that definitely stands out for me um, specifically is making hats. And, you know, you'll watch videos and a lot of people are making wool hats and stuff like that. But um, wool, the texture of wool and the makeup of wool is so close to Afro textured hair that they don't really play well together. And not a lot of people know that. So when you see um, designers like uh, Denise Bayron, she made the, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's a lined beanie. So it's a knit beanie and then it's lined that is specifically something that caters to the black maker. Um, so that's kind of the, the space that I wanted my podcast to occupy is a space of crafters, but also very attentive to the black crafter. And that's very important to me. Um, and that's really why Quirky Monday exists, to be honest. Um, and I really hope that um, my wanting to be that representation, I really hope that it's being successful. Um, and I have, I've received comments from people who have said things like, watching my podcast has given them a different perspective on why representation matters and, and what it's like. Um, because they'll see me get super excited over like an enamel pin with a black girl on it. And I'm just like, Pew! oh my gosh, it's amazing. But when that's not the norm, you know, when you regularly don't see yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, when you regularly don't see yourself out in the world doing the things that you're interested in when you do see that it's amazing and it's so uplifting and i really hope that my space my channel my instagram like my online presence is able to do that for somebody else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. amen <laughs> I totally get that because i think we started like maybe around the same time or something when did you start your podcast Uh, <laughs> I think mine was like 2016 or 2017. I, I want to say, I know it was in October. Yeah. And I want to say that my podcast, I'm a terrible judge of time. Let me preface that. So Quirky Monday Craftcast is either four or five years old. Yeah. We're not sure. <laughs> I think like you'd been about just before me, around the same time sort of thing. But I've got yarn in my mouth, sorry. That's so funny. I feel like you always have yarn on your face. <laughs> the yarn is trying to become one with you. It's because like, it's always sat on me somewhere. Um, 
but then I started mine because I didn't know anyone in real life, really, other than like my grandmother that um, crocheted or knitted. So I wanted to find other people. But I actually stopped for a while because I didn't see anyone like me. And I was just a bit like, I'm just going to go sit in my hole for a bit because I don't have the courage yeah. of that space right now. But you just battled through that. And so, yeah, I really admire you for that because you've got a really nice community. And like you said, it's so nice to like flick through your YouTube recommendations. It's like, oh, she has my color skin. Let me see what you're up to. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. you look like me. You've got hair like me. Like, I remember the first thing that caught my eye about you, aside from just the granny squares on everything, oh, which I'm just like, oh, I wish I could, like, make granny squares like you. I don't know. I burn out so fast. But the first thing that really um, solidified you in my mind was your braids. Yeah. I loved your braids and I was like, okay, I see you. So much. I was having this debate with my partner the other day. Do I get it braided? We're about to go into a second lockdown. Do I risk six hours with someone to get my hair braided? Because I just miss being like, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, And I did for a while think about going down the dreadlock route because then my hair, I know it will retain the length and it will grow really, really long. Because yeah. This is not yarn related, but I'm getting like stress breakage. Oh yeah, it'll do that. So um, like now it's up, but then as soon as this is done, I'll like take it out and just, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like thinning all here. So anyway, no one needs to know about that. But because I've been stressing with one thing or another the last few weeks, just having, yeah. Whereas when I have braids, I don't know why I don't get any breakage. Um, I mean, it's less manipulation when you have braids. So you're not like doing a lot with it. Yeah. And I don't really do a lot anyway. Like I would happily go on Zoom with like my do-rag on in the morning, but etiquette says you can't. So <laughs> I don't, but um, yeah. A funny thing on, on those lines, um, the job that I work right now, I started in January and our, our university shut down in March. Okay. So I hadn't even been like employed there for three months yet when everything went remote. So when I first got the job, my best friend was like, okay, Kalisha, you have to wait at least three months before you, you know, bust out the head wraps and stuff. <laughs> and so, you know, I was being really meticulous with keeping my locks like always freshly twisted because it's not a whole lot of us in where I work. So um, I was keeping everything freshly twisted and then lockdown happened and I was like, nope. well, y'all about to get these head wraps now. Like flip the locks to the side, had a big head wrap on and they're all like, I really like your, your head thing. <laughs> Yay. Just know this is going to continue when we go back on campus. Isn't it funny how we do that? Like, yeah, that's, that's a whole topic, man. Isn't it? So I know, I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've done so many different hair colors in braids as well. So when I got with my partner, it was gray, gray braids. Mm -hmm. I liked those. And then after that, and I think I went green, maybe red, and then that was it. He's never seen me in braids ever again. So he's like, the girl I got with doesn't look like you anymore. <laughs> like, well, this is that's one thing. The hair will change. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when lockdown is no longer a thing. I think I will get it braided and just give, you know, when you just need a rest from your own hair, mm -hmm. I need a break from my own hair. So yeah. But anyway, about the podcast after our little side track into hair means snip. It's such a good aside though. Like I don't get to have these conversations. <laughs> no, I know. Like so um, good. there's not many people that I can be like, I'm, I'm having a stress, stress break, breakage. And they're like, what's that? And I'm what's like, that? oh, you just don't understand. It's okay. Uh, it'll be fine. It will thicken up. Just I'm gentle with myself. But anyway, um, yeah. So we both started our podcast, and I shied away from it a little bit. Um, but you just really leaned in, and there's a few other people that also really leaned in, which is really great. Um, and it's mad sometimes. I'll get like DMs like, "Hi, I follow you, and I'm just really glad you've got my color skin." And 
when you grow up not seeing yourself in the media or even in like knitting books like the magazines in the UK have got loads better but yeah I remember the first time there was a girl my colour on the front cover I did a whole vlog on it like look <laughs> because it just doesn't happen um yeah and then there's a knitting company Rowan and like I was flicking through loads of magazines and it was just like the usual looking white lady and then there was one with a lady with an afro and I bought that in that entire booklet and I'm like working my way through the patterns so yeah it is good to see representation and I think like the knitting community the crochet the whole fiber sphere is yeah really there now of like inclusion yeah doing that bit by bit day by day <laughs> um so most people probably don't want to hear about our hair i bet they do really but i think they're here to hear about like what it's like setting up a channel doing that first recording picking a name so how did you pick your name well <laughs> so um nadira tani has been my aol screen name since you know, AOL chat room days. And it's actually a mix of two African names. Um, the name Nadira means unusual, mm -hmm. and Tani is born on Monday. Mm -hmm. So that is me. I'm the unusual girl who was born on Monday. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, I like that. <laughs> which is also where you get the quirky Monday. Um, mm -hmm. So I just kind of tried to keep everything. I mean, it's me. I, I have always been a little bit weird so <laughs> that's me did you have you done that Myers Brick personality I have and you are a I am INFJ which is what I am and we're so rare, <laughs> we're so rare. You just remind right? me of like, I think like like 10% of the population is mm -hmm. it's like super rare I uh, we had a um, kind of like a socially distant get together with my church friends. And we all started talking about our Myers-Briggs and everyone started, the people who hadn't taken it were taking it. And it turns out that the majority of my church friends are also introverts, but I am so introverted that I thought they were all extroverts. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm with you in that I'm hugely introverted and people think I'm extroverted because we're so socially caring and like we, we're awkward, but they're just used to being awkward. Um, but people don't realize that I'm heavily introverted and like I need mm -hmm. a lot of time by myself to recharge, yep. otherwise I will yep. not function. So just like, crap. when I see my partner, sometimes I'm like, you watch a film and I'll go upstairs, headphones in, just leave me with my yarn or my journal. And that's my me time when I need that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is also an introvert, so it works fine. He's not like, I need you. But people in my past have just been like, what? You want Don't you want to go do stuff? No, definitely not. <laughs> and all their lockdowns hard in that I miss church and like my people and just maybe being like shall we go to the cinema yeah okay i really also like that there's no social obligation anymore yeah it's i like, like that we should just stay home and no one's like you're staying home again <laughs> yeah i'm following the rules <laughs> to the t like don't come near me <laughs> i i um i have this thing i don't like i don't like people to like bump into me and stuff. So I always used to say I have a bubble yes. of like my, my arm span. Oh my gosh. And my, I have very long arms. <laughs> so when social, like the social distance thing happened and they were like six feet. I was, <laughs> I was like, I've been doing this my whole life. So my but, dad calls oh, it. Oh, this is delightful. Yeah, my dad calls it my hula hoop because I'm literally like personal space and he's like, yes, in your hula hoop, you are going to kick off. And I'm just like, get away from me. Yes, if I can touch you, you are too close. <laughs> and I'm always like, no touchy. As people come to hug me, I'm like, no touchy. Because it just messes with my balance. Like internally, it just dis disrupts me. And I can't. You have no idea how much joy I'm having right now. 
I'm just like, yeah, we are the same. <laughs> like it completely disrupts me and people don't get that. They're like, huh? And I don't even mean like I feel physically unbalanced. I just inside, I'm all Yeah, out. it's just, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. But I think that's because we are quite empathic and people can leave residue yes emotions on is yes that is that is a lot yeah that's that's a whole nother conversation man <laughs> we can have an entire zoom on the introversion and the empathy thing oh my gosh <laughs> we could just start an entire series <laughs> hair inclusion introversion <laughs> oh my yes. um, cheeks hurt too much smiling and laughing mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry it's okay I'm, I'm enjoying this um and then my other question was going to be when did you learn to crochet and knit my mom taught me to crochet in the seventh grade oh. and she taught me how to do the double crochet nice. she taught me how to chain and double crochet so I was just going back and forth I still have my first blanket it is a special looking thing. <laughs> and so I was just going back and forth, my double crochet. And then my cousin Dawn, um, she used to make these granny square blankets. Like she was, she would stress crochet. That was her thing. Yeah. And she taught me how to do the granny square. And so my first blanket is back and forth, double crochet, and then granny squares, yes. and then back and forth, double crochet, and granny squares. And the gauge is all over the place. Oh, <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's, you know, middle school, seventh grade was uh, when I learned how to crochet. And then I learned how to knit on YouTube, probably, it was a little bit before I started the podcast. So I'm a, a fairly new knitter. Um, but, you know, just like, like with most things, I feel like if I can find a video explaining how to do it or something like that or a tutorial, I'm pretty confident that I can yeah, figure, it out. figure it out or learn it or something like that. But, yeah, I've only been knitting for like four to five years. Pretty much the same as me. I think I learned to crochet a bit later than you and then randomly, like I could knit, but I never was really into it. And then um, my grandma like showed me the basics, but she was really like militant in teaching me. So if there was a mistake, she'd rip it out. So I never showed her my knitting. Mm. Just mm -hmm. up all your work. Um, and then I wanted to learn socks and she was like, you can't learn socks because you've not even done a scarf. And I was like, excuse me, what? So I taught myself on YouTube <laughs> and made some socks and then Everything I've knit since then has just been like, I don't think I've finished anything. I start, I dabble in stuff, and then they get left because crochet is my love and I'm faster at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think you're the same, like crochet is your love, but you will knit. I describe crochet as my first yarn language. Yeah. Um, so whenever I go to design something or I, wanna, I want to you know, design a pattern, I automatically go to crochet first. Yeah. Um, because that's just, you know, how I relate to the yarn. Um, but knitting has become my, like, mindless activity because I can knit and not look, but I can't crochet and not look. Oh. Um, the only, the, I can only granny stitch and not look because the spaces are there. And I know the, you know, the, the, the motion of the stitches, but if I'm doing straight, like double crochet, those stitches all over the place. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so whenever I am, you know, like watching TV or in a meeting or something like that, it's round and round, like sock knitting is my happy place with that. But I am, I don't think I currently have a crochet project going. You can have some of mine and finish them. <laughs> You know what? I don't. You need to stop. I need to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I will be starting new things today. I find knitting really meditative. Like, yeah. Something on my mind really worrying me. 
because if it's just a simple stitch because it takes me so long I've got plenty of time whereas crochet I whip through it really fast mm -hmm. so make a granny square for the sake of it I don't need granny squares have you seen how many are like lying around yeah. me at the moment um, <laughs> so yeah um and then the other my other question see I had these all planned and it was going to just flow and now I'm like hmm let me think <laughs> My other question was recording your your first vlog. Oh yes. Like was that intense or that was <sighs> I think back on it and I'm just like, oh man. That's me. That don't was awkward. It. Don't look at it. <laughs> oh. Like anyone who is watching this right now, if you have not seen any of my videos, I encourage you not to go back to that first one. You know they're going to go viral now because everyone's going to be like, let's go watch that first I know. They're gonna be, it's going to be like, Phew. but I mean, it was, it was nerve, it was nerve wracking in the sense that the internet is so big and so like there's no there's no like filter there's no rule really so the idea of me coming into this space first of all when i know there's not a lot of people that look like me coming into the space and putting myself out there was a little bit nerve-wracking but then at the same time i felt like nobody's gonna see this <laughs> for i don't even know how long i felt like nobody's gonna see this except for like my mom <laughs> you know and the the thought that nobody's gonna see this kind of made me feel better about it yeah but then it's in stark contrast to the idea that i want people to see this because i want to be the representation right so it was a weird little headspace that I was in. But um, the hardest part of starting a podcast is starting it. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part. Pressing record and recording that video and then pressing upload. Oh my gosh. On public. Publish. You're like, oh! It's yes. <laughs> yes. Well, exactly. That's all the feelings right there. Like, let me go hide under my blanket right now. Um, but for me, I feel like anyone who has experienced online Kalisha would not believe that I'm as introverted as I am. Yeah. Because for some reason in this specific space, I'm very comfortable. Um, maybe... I think I started getting more comfortable in podcasting when I realized that there were like a couple people who were regular watchers. Yep. And so like they would comment or something like that and I would see the same name. So then I started feeling like, okay, I'm making this video and this person, I'm talking to this person, you know, it wasn't so vast. So it kind of feel, felt like, okay, I'm going to sit down and, and record a chat to send to my friend. Yeah. You know, so I would say like that would be a tip, I think, um, to give to people wanting to start or wanting to get into uh, recording and sharing things online is just to chat and be honest about yourself. Um, that's actually a comment that I get quite a bit is people talk about my my openness or my honesty about Kalisha, you know, um, outside of yarny things, I do talk about mental health. I talk about my experiences with that and I try to be transparent with things. Um, I know a lot of people will, like if they're having a not so good day, they won't record or they don't talk about when they're having a not so good day. But for me, I feel like the good days are obviously really important, but the not so good days are also really important because it gives you perspective. Yeah. And um, 
I try within myself when I do have those downswings to always remind myself that this moment isn't your life. Yeah. Like this moment is a moment and it will pass. And that same thing goes for when you're feeling good. You know, this great moment isn't your life. This moment is a moment and it will pass. So either way, you have to either relish that good moment and like suck the marrow out of it. <laughs> and you have to acknowledge that that bad moment and let it be what it's going to be and keep moving. You know, and you're really good at that. There is, I find for me, I'm so I don't know if you are. I'm really all or nothing. So I either share everything or I share nothing. And because sometimes when I'm in those downswings, I can't share because it might be related to family and it's not for me to give those details mm -hmm. or my day job. That I just don't share it. Like I recorded a vlog last weekend, and I did a whole thing, and then it got to like. I literally leaned forward, I was like, I can't do this. And I cut the whole lot out and I didn't put any of it up. <laughs> so, yeah. There, There's, of course, times like that when I'm just like, nope. Nah. <laughs> nope. Nah. It's really like, important to share, though, because yeah. like, people might look and think, like, uber productive and always sparkly and smiley. Yes. No, that's not. Like, yes, not like that all the time. We are just, yes. Um, I think that that message is very important because I definitely fall victim to that, you know, scrolling on Instagram and you see these people's profiles and you're like, man, you know, you're doing so many awesome things. Your life is so good. Your life is this, your life is that. No, this is a snapshot of a very complex experience. And I want to be able to in these snapshots of my experience, I want you to be able to see a more complete picture of Kalisha. Of course, you're not going to be able to like know me 100%, but I feel like if you watch my videos and you listen to my rambles, you got a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. And I think it's important when you start a channel, vlogcast, whatever you call it, that mm -hmm. You show up as you, and also I yeah. think that really adds an element to your videos because everybody lives in a different area, everyone has different experiences. Like, um, I used to not really want to show like my home because it wasn't like Instagram worthy, and then I was like, But this is how I live, and people that don't live in the UK don't have houses like this, and they're intrigued to see and they want to see like the areas that I go walk in because my scenery is totally different to your day-to-day -day scenery. So just show up and be like, this is who I am. And yeah, it makes your channel a lot easier because you can't go on there as a persona because keeping yeah. it up is just... Exhausting. Yeah. Just show people your world instead. And I, those, I've realized those are my favorite videos and channels to watch where people are them they're themselves and you get to kind of know them yeah. you know and you can see little bits of their lives you know maybe it's because i'm nosy i don't know i might be nosy <laughs> i just i love seeing how other people live you know how other people move through the world and and what they experience like yeah. um I think one of the things I had heard, I forget who it was, but it was definitely a UK um, podcaster, but they were talking about how they don't have air conditioning and there's no screens on the windows. And I was like, what is that like? No screens? <laughs> no, no screens, no air con. Like, I have like a fireplace. I have my heating on right now because it's cold. Um, like it's dark outside. So we're, it's quarter to five. And if I turn... My curtains are open, it's pitch black. Like, yeah, it's just completely different. And then you are like, we've got air con. I'm like, what? I'm coming. Yes, here, like, here in Florida, we're just like, there's the air conditioning is on all the time. So you're wearing your sweaters inside. <laughs> I'm wearing this you... genuinely cold, like my heating. I've got a big radiator here. It's on and it's pumping our heat because I think it's like, I know we do our temperatures differently, but it's 
it says it's 12 degrees Celsius and that's relatively quite mild. I'll have to work out what that is in the other one, but it was like frosty this morning. There was frost on the ground. <laughs> so different. I will take I footage and put in my vlogs just to show you like the, the fields in the morning when the frost comes out. Oh. Frost all over it. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll take some footage. Please. But then you need to show me the sunshine because I'm getting withdrawals and I feel like I'm going Look, to I will. <laughs> I will. Like, I was trying to figure out, I'm going to do Vlogmas this year. Okay. And I was trying to figure out because, you know, it's 2020 and all bets are off. That's what I'm saying. All rules are gone. Yeah. Anything goes. I'm like, Vlogmas should start halfway through November. Yeah. I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> so I will definitely be getting footage of outside like I would show you out the window but it's just blown out I can it's just like, just bright yeah whereas the sun went down at like half four here because we're well into winter now yeah. <laughs> but I miss season <laughs> we can swap <laughs> for a bit and also there's a lot of fireworks at the moment because it was bonfire night I don't think you do bonfire night we do bonfire. No, okay, bonfire but I think I learned about that on V for Vendetta. <laughs> yeah, so um, Guy Fawkes tried to blow up Parliament, and ever since, like, we set off fireworks. There's a big story behind it, but that's the gist. So, because everyone's locked down, they're having fireworks at home. So, anyway. Oh, that's fun. We are really good at these side tangents. Um, <laughs> that's how you know it's a good conversation exactly. when it just flows from thing to thing. <laughs> Um, um, my other question, so I had the same when I put up my first vlog and then I go back to it now, I'm just like, child, what were you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but then do you think it gets easier as you go along? I think so. Um, I think the idea of putting a video out on the internet gets like easier to swallow as you continue doing it. Yeah. Um, especially for me, it was especially when I started recognizing people like in the comments, okay. then it doesn't feel so weird. Um, and then I feel like if you, if a person is considering starting a podcast, this will be the best time to do it mm -hmm. because we're communicating so much through video and stuff now. So you're kind of doing it anyway. Just talk about something you want to talk about and hit record, right? Exactly. But um, I think that for me, the most difficult thing is consistency, mm -hmm. especially recently. I've been having a very difficult time with consistently uploading and recording, well, consistently recording and then uploading um, just because trying to balance you know, everything between work and then getting off work and then s still being in the same space, like from this table is where I'm working. And then this is also where I write and, you know, everything is right here. So figuring out that balance, that work-life balance has been kind of difficult. But before pre-COVID, um, I would have a specific day where I would I would record my podcast and then I would give myself a day to edit and then I would set it to upload. You know, I had a routine. So um, I definitely noticed that when I was consistently uploading my videos, that it was a lot easier to continue consistently uploading my videos. But then when you take like a two week break, <laughs> you got to start all over again. And you're just like, how do I do this? Um, I hear you. I definitely think consistency means growth, but it also means yeah. routine. And I think a routine means you just end up like for me, I'm about to start a task and I think, oh, I'll record a bit of that to put in my blog and it becomes second mm -hmm. But then when you stop thinking, oh, I'll record a bit of that, is the week that you're like, I don't know what I'm going to put out. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I definitely think consistency. Consistently putting out the, the vlogs means your channel grows. And whenever I go AWOL for whatever reason for a bit, it takes a while for that momentum to build again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if you just come on for like 10 minutes and be like, hi, I don't really have much to show you. This is going on. Have a look at these. At least there's something. It just keeps the channel ticking over. Mm -hmm. 
yeah definitely <laughs> um i i want to know this just from my <laughs> just from this is a question from me when i record my introduction sometimes it takes me like three four attempts am i on my own at this or do you do that <laughs> No. What happens with me is randomly I'll completely forget what my introduction is. And I'm just like, what do I say? What is this? <laughs> or, you know, uh, because I have my dogs, they'll just start barking randomly. Or I get tongue tied or something like that. And you're just like, well, gotta stop and start again. I think. I regularly re-record the beginning of my podcast probably three times at at the at at the least. This is me every time, and I'm like, "Come on, you could do this." And I'm like, "Hey, uh, welcome to HGDC, blah blah blah." And then I'll do something, and I'll be like, "Why did you do that?" And then I'll have to start again. <laughs> and then you have to think, "Can I edit that out?" Yeah, and then you're like, "Oh, I'll just re-record." But <laughs> yeah that is me I, occasionally i try to do like no edit podcasts those are always shenanigans and tomfoolery <laughs> and i'm just like we're not editing that out let's keep it going <laughs> oh gosh. see i guess for you editing takes a while like it does for me it does it does how long would you so how long does it take you to record and then edit I normally, like on average, my podcasts are an hour and a few minutes, probably at the most an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes okay. um, of, of content. And I try to cut it down to an hour because yeah. um, I'm a person who likes watching long podcasts. Okay. So there's that. Um, so if I have say an hour and 15 minutes of raw content i will probably be editing it for if i sat down and was diligent at least two and a half hours yes and this is at, the at the very least and it's probably longer than that because you gotta cut out well you don't have to but sometimes i say um a lot <laughs> Uh, or, or I'll just be like, oh, you got to cut that out. And then adding in the text, if I have pictures that I want to put in, putting those in, um, adding the, um, the title card at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. It's a lot of like little things in the editing. Yeah. Um, even when I say, oh, I'm not going to do a lot of editing on this podcast. It'll be, I try to do like a rough edit. That's still like an hour of, of work. Yeah. So it's definitely something. I mean, and you don't have to, to edit. There's plenty of podcasters that I watch who don't edit. I admire them, but I am so, um, I'm not a perfectionist, but I do hold myself to a higher standard then I guess I hold other people. So I'm just like, no, Kalisha, you need to, you need to work on these things. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I just have to be like, okay, we're not going to, we're not going to edit out every, um, we're not going to edit out every like. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I think that's something I really wanted to draw people's attention to because sometimes people think I'll oh, set up a YouTube channel and it's a quick way to money. And like, First of all, we put a lot of time into our channels. So when somebody's mm -hmm. mad and they're like, why didn't you put out a video? It could just be that you've recorded an hour's worth of footage. And then when you're editing, it crashes and you lose it. Like, has that happened to you? Because that's, that's destroying when that happens. <laughs> I think that happened to me, but I have also recorded an entire video. And then as I'm editing it, just be like, I don't like this at all. Yeah. And so... I'm not going to immediately go back and re-record because I just talked about this for an hour. Yeah. So catch me next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We could put in 
not only is the, the time of recording, but we make whatever we, we talk about. Yes. So there's that mm -hmm. time. So I might have crocheted for four or five hours that week or more to show you. Um, so then an hour recording and then two hours editing and then an hour for it to export. You don't need to do much, just check on it and then upload it. And like, that's a lot of your... <laughs> Hopefully it exports and uploads because there have been times when I have let this just sit there like, okay, you're uploading, we're good. And then I come back and it's like it failed. Yeah. You had one job. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, why didn't I check this two hours ago? Because now it's... Yeah. Growing. Now you got to do it all over again. Yeah. And then, so it is quite time intensive and we do it because we do enjoy it and we like to share yeah. and we want to show up in this space. Yeah. But YouTube just doesn't automatically sprinkle money on you for doing something. Like, you have to hit the eligibility. And I've said before, like... Um, a thousand subscribers and then is it like something amount of watch hours I can't even remember now I've hit it but don't even ask me it was quite a lot but when you started your channel that wasn't in place was it that came no yeah. yeah it came afterwards because I remember they had this there was this huge push in the fiber community for people to go watch other people's videos so that they could make their eligibility yeah. but I never I never, I didn't start this with the goal of making money off of it. Yeah. Um, I don't have ads or anything on my YouTube channel, so I don't make money directly from YouTube. Yeah. The only, the only way that YouTube makes me money is the fact that I can direct people to my Etsy shop or um, to buy my patterns or something like that. That's the only way that YouTube is making me money is I guess the visibility. Um, but I, I've thought about putting ads on my videos, but ads and commercials irritate me. <laughs> yeah. So I have to really like grit my teeth when I'm watching someone's video and an ad comes up and I'm just like, <laughs> see i get i totally get that and i at first wasn't gonna put ads on my channel and then i read a book and i'll have to think which book it was but it was like all around you there are like you have to pay for like your tv channels here in the uk and mm -hmm. you pay for everything in your life and you're putting out free content for someone and if they watch an ad for three seconds and skip it you're going to be re like compensated for the time that you've put in. So when they put it like that, I was like, okay, but I get it when, you know, when you watch someone and it's a clickbait video and every five minutes there's an ad, I'm not going to watch that. But if like you were to put in a couple within like your hour, I would just be like fair game. I might even watch it for the full 30 seconds. So you get the full amount of money. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll let you have that. <laughs> um, like it is the party break. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I know there is a bit of a, a different thought on the ads, but I, if you put them in, I wouldn't be like, I'm not watching. I'd still be like, I'm here. Um, yeah. But now, anyone that starts their channel now, they have to hit those requirements. Um, yeah. And some, some channels seem to blow up overnight and other channels like mine, like you have to be diligently putting videos out to attract yeah. people. And I don't really think there's like a way of guessing which one you're going to be. You just put your videos out and see. I think mine, the growth on my channel was definitely was specifically because um, Gigi made it mentioned me. Okay. And I can tell you it without her mentioning me, I would not have, the, the numbers that I have on my channel or on my Instagram. Um, I wouldn't have them right now. I believe that eventually, you know, they would come. Yeah. Um, but she, she mentioned me on Instagram because of a video that I did on Instagram where I had written a piece and it was called I am here, I think. Mm. And it was my response to the racism in the knitting community conversation. Yeah. 
and the the quick growth that my profiles and my presence had after that was very uncomfortable mm -hmm. it was as if you know because i think at the time i had been maybe podcasting for two years and it was as if someone had opened up all of the doors and the windows in my house yeah. and people were coming in yeah. yeah and i was just like i and i remember feeling like i have to change the way that i post things online and i have to change um i have to make myself more palatable not that i'm not not that i'm not palatable but i felt that tension like now there's all of these people who don't know me that i know are here because i'm black and it was just a very and it still is a very difficult thought to manage yeah but at the same time i'm just like i'm not changing i'm not changing anything if y'all are here y'all gonna hear what i have to say about things yeah and um i uh i went through a similar when, like, kind of like the Black Lives Matter movement really ramped up around everything that happened to George Floyd, um, I was added into all these lists of like black makers. Like, they mm -hmm. wouldn't ask me, they just put me in lists. Yes. And then I had an influx of people. Like, I went from like a thousand to like 2,000 people pretty much yep. in the days of a week. And I didn't know anybody that had come to follow me and they were just following me because I was fashionable. Yep. I felt like this little space that I'd built for myself um, was no longer my space. Um, and I remember feeling really angry and wanting to just post like, don't be here now just because my skin's fashionable to disappear when I'm not fashionable. But then I also had to like, take a step back and think, I know people are really trying and they want to hear from like my point of view, what it's like. And I put a video up, like enough is enough. Um, and I was crying so much when I recorded that. I cut quite a bit of the crying out because I don't want it to be about me being majorly upset. But um, it was just really uncomfortable having all of, like everybody's welcome, but I was just like, I feel like I'm now being seen for being black. And in my life, that's never been a good, place to be in to be pointed mm -hmm. out because you're black and it annoyed me because I'm not black I'm half and I felt like all these people that were putting me on list and calling me black I was like you don't have the first clue like it's you've not even you've just assumed my identity for me <laughs> and I have my own identity like you can't just discount my mum because I would only be half of who I am Mm -hmm. um, and people that are fully black have it harder than me because I am more palatable than being fully black. So yeah, I I totally get that. And then it was really difficult to have like you you don't recognize the names as much, and it felt really. And I messaged one of my friends like, so I've been on Instagram for ages, and now this has happened, and other people mm -hmm. have on my list they like they want to see me uh i still can't get my head around it now but i i was also put on on those lists yeah. and there i have two feelings so there was one list um that happened i don't even know was it was it january 2019 i don't even know i don't even know when everything first popped off mm -hmm. um and there was a list and it was like, um, I forget what it was called, but it was basically a list of, of any BIPOC, so black indigenous person of color yep. in the fiber community. And the list was extensive. And for me, I was happy that that list existed because I was like, this is what I have been looking for, Yeah, you know? But then, um, it ended up having to be taken down because unsavory characters were kind of using it as like trolling. They find you as a yeah through there. Yeah. But the this year when you know in the summer when everything happened, 
um, there was another list that was put out and it was like tag black makers that you know won't break the chain, won't, won't break the Black Lives Matter chain. And I got tagged on that multiple times. And I had to, when I first was tagged on it, I, it just sat funny with me. And so after I thought about it for a while, I was, it made me, I realized what I was feeling was this isn't about the message of a black life mattering. This is something else entirely. And I had to, yeah, I had to, to post and say, don't tag me in things like this. Like I still don't have the words yeah. to express what that feels like. So you're just you like know? being made to perform and having to participate when all those people, where were they when you had to participate in being racially abused when you were growing up? Like, yeah, I just, I did the same, like don't involve me because, and you know, when people say, thank you for sharing your voice, I'm like, uh, I've always shared my voice. You just never listened. Like it really winds me up. Thank you for sharing. And another person I remember like chiming in and saying something like, you know, the, all the black squares and people were like, don't use them. It's really rude. And I was like, well, at least I can tell now people that have posted them, at least they're trying. So, and I've never felt like this scene and have this amount of people tried before. And then somebody like attacked me like, no, it's really bad. Black people said we shouldn't be doing it. And then they looked at my profile picture and were like, oh, I didn't realize that you were black. And I'm like, I'm half black. And welcome to the multiple layers of racism that exist out there. Because at a glance from a distance, you assumed I was white. And then when you look close, you're like, oh no, you've got something in you. So, and like, I've seen it from being with my dad, who's black and the way he's treating and being with my mom who's white and then when they're together and how they automatically assume I'm related to my dad but my mom who's white they're like are you two related like I actually look like my mom if you put us in black and white I look like my mom but you can't see it because you're so used to seeing color uh, anyway <laughs> it's so like you said multi-layered yeah it, it's a very multi-layered existence yeah. and I do. I sometimes coming from the perspective of wanting to be wanting to rep, be a representative, you know, face. Yeah. I almost feel like I'm wanting both sides. You know, I want to be a representative. I want other, you know, black girls or um to be able to go on YouTube and, and search for something and find my videos, right? But at the same time, I'm just like, if you're just here because I'm black, yeah. you know? So it's kind of like wanting both sides, but yeah. at the same time, the thing that I think makes the difference, um, I'm, com I'm okay with people being in my space because I'm black. Mm -hmm. If you are here because you want to see yeah you know like don't just be in my space to check off a box you yeah. know but if you're if you realize like oh my goodness i don't follow any black people yeah. let me see what this girl is about and you come into my space and you're like okay i really can get down with what she's talking about i really enjoy the things that she's doing then by all means stay yeah. you know if you come into my space and you're like, um, I thought one way, but after listening to your perspective, I kind of, you know, I may not have changed my mind, but it's kind of given me another perspective to consider by all means stay. Because I think that's the only way that anything changes yeah. or anything grows and develops is by people stepping into a space that is uncomfortable. Yeah. And is oh uh, people stepping into a space where they can see the differences in other people and just let them be different. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's hard to put into words. It is, and it's hard to 
put the understanding across and then you throw in your emotions on top of that and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think we both agree that YouTube has been a really good platform for us both in terms of yeah. representation and then also so people can find what we're about but then what we do like you have your designs out there I have mine um YouTube definitely helps like you said drive people yeah with that visibility definitely and I think it's good because on YouTube you see the person like the person is alive on YouTube yeah you know where on Instagram they're like still photos for the most part yeah you know um, or if you have blogs, it's your written words or it's your pictures on the blog, you know, pictures of, of you and your patterns, things like that. Um, and I, I have, I've had that experience where I have followed a particular blogger for years and then found out that she had a YouTube and I was like, this is what your voice sounds like. I'm a mate, <laughs> you know, like, whoa, I'm like, you sound exactly like I thought you would. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's. It's good to be able to see the humanity of the person. Yeah, the more you know, and yeah, 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 yeah. I I agree with you on that, and I think you don't have to have a YouTube channel, but if you do want to put patterns out there, it never hurts to have that visibility. Uh, mm-hmm. But then you you can't just show up and be like, buy my pattern, buy my pattern. Like you have to have a bit more to say than that. Um, would you have any other tips for anyone that wants to start a YouTube channel? I think I would say whenever you start something online, there's always going to be trolls. <laughs> and um, one of the things that, uh, Hannah of the cozy cottage crochet always says is don't feed the trolls. Mm-hmm. And that would definitely be something that I would also want to give as a tip yeah. is when you start putting things out on the internet, there's going to be somebody that has something negative to say, and you don't owe anyone that energy of like fighting unless I mean, I go into (laughs) discussions and and arguments or whatever with the idea of like, is this the hill I want to die on? Yes. Like, if you are ready to go down with that, but if this is not the hill, if this is not that hill, then, you know, bow out. Don't feed that troll. Yeah. Um, I would also say that it's definitely a learning to give yourself grace Mm -hmm. is also something very good to be mindful of when you start putting things out on the internet, because sometimes you will get not so much trolls, but a lot of criticism. Yes. And for me, when people criticize something that I do, I tend to take it very personally. Mm -hmm. And it can be the silliest little criticism, but it will stick with me. For instance, someone told me I said like too much about, and I almost said like just then, about maybe two or three years ago, they they, they were like, you say like about every other word. You should really work on that. And for the next few episodes, I was so stressed because I didn't want to say like, I didn't want to, to do that. And then I got to the point where I said, if I'm thinking so hard about not saying like, because someone said, I say like too much, (laughs) I'm not going to say something that I wanted to say. No, you're not. So I say like a lot. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. And I say so. Like every sentence has got so, so, so. And that's just, if you don't want to hear it, then I guess you can go and watch somebody else because 
we're humans and what what can be said to you can that's my filler word there we go and it can leave a dent in you when somebody says things, yeah. things like that and but what I try and do is focus on the hundred likes thumbs up and the hundred nice comments and I ignore the two random thumbs down and the person that says I can't hear you or something or you're this you're that and I usually just delete them and like I won't even respond I would just block them from my channel because I just think well you can go watch somebody else then yeah. I don't I haven't had too many like super aggressive comments like that there have been some um one of the difficult things for me is when someone doesn't agree with like a purchase I've made or a choice that I've made yeah that is that is been the most difficult thing for me is when people come into the comments to try to change your mind on something yeah and I'm not I'm not a let me change this other person's mind about whatever mm -hmm. um I can have my own opinions about what someone else is doing but they're just that they're my opinions if you think that what you're doing is what you want to do and it's not hurting me it's not having a negative impact on communities of people yeah but people will do that though they will bring it's shame to you and try and shame you like i've had people say mm. like, you shouldn't buy that yarn because it's processed and then i'm like i don't need to justify this to you i'll buy what i want but fyi what you've just suggested i'm allergic to but like people will bring their shame into your space and be like well, you shouldn't do that you should do this and like you said we're here to like show another side another perspective and then you do you boo and now do me <laughs> That's the the yarn usage and and yarn conversation you is. You do not need to buy um, expensive yarn to be able to hold space in this environment, this little right. universe that we're in. And anyone that says to you like, "Don't buy acrylic," okay, you, here's my PayPal down below. Go put some money in there, and then I'll buy that expensive yarn because. You don't know my living circumstances and you don't know you don't know how much debt I might be in, you don't know um what I maybe might. I just don't want to spend a whole lot of money on yarn. Like maybe that's not what I'm about today. Yeah, because my I have other financial priorities and that's not for you to comment on. And if you do prefer something that's considered more luxurious, then I'm really pleased for you. Yeah. But that doesn't take away from what anybody else makes just because it's in what somebody else might deem an inferior yarn like let's not shame each other let's just be like you use what you want to use i use predominantly acrylic yarn and for a while i was like oh i'm really gonna have to get rid of all this acrylic yarn yeah. is always gonna be my thing and like i'm hoping that companies will find ways to reduce the impact on the environment absolutely mm -hmm. but you're not gonna get me using yarns that like impact my health or i'm not in my price range so yeah um yeah that's all we could do like i think we're gonna end up having a series like yarn and pricing and inclusivity and hair and personality types what else did we go and say like we could have a whole Just series heather and kalisha chit chat <laughs> yes <laughs> like this week <laughs> I didn't but, know what you're wearing. You're wearing something crocheted. Oh, I am. I specifically wore something crocheted. What are you wearing? This is a <laughs> sweater that I made out of Lion Brand Mandala. Ooh. And I don't remember how old it is. It's at least a couple years old. And this was my first crocheted pullover. And... Um, I kind of just like started it and I said, I'm gonna do this. Didn't watch any videos, nothing. Drew like a doodle of like, okay, I will have to have increases here and blah, blah, blah. And I was just going. And I ended up having to buy, I think three or four balls of yarn because I wanted the sleeves to match. Um, <laughs> so you could cut the color out. Yes, I had to, there was a little snipping and everything, but I really, 
I really like this. And I have, um, I have a couple other crochet like cardigans and things. I made this one green cardigan a while ago. I need to bring it back out. But I decided that I wanted to do two color crochet cables. Mm. And in my head, I said, okay, I had done a single color crochet cable before. And I was like, well, I just changed the color of the yarn, right? It shouldn't be that hard. It was a little bit difficult. <laughs> but I, I managed to get through it. Um, but yeah, there's no pattern for this. You just had fun making it, but you've got, I did. you've got patterns available. I do. I have, um, two shawls. No, that is a lie. <laughs> I have four shawls. <laughs> I'm gonna need myself to know what what patterns I have available. Yeah. Um, I have the Just Feel Better shawl and Just Feel Festive. Yeah. Um, those are free free downloads. And then I have the Gemini shawl. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the Puppy Love shawl. Those are my paid shawl patterns. Those are all crocheted. Um, and then I have a crochet hat pattern which is called Orion. And one thing you will learn is that I am in love with space. So most of my designs have to do with some sort of spacey something. Yeah. Um, and they're either about space or a story that I wanted to tell. Yeah. And uh, then I have a, a sock pattern, um, a knit sock pattern. Um, all of my patterns are available in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. Um, and right now I do have a coupon code going. Ooh. It's, <laughs> what is it? No. Save, save, save 10. Save 10. Mm -hmm. um, and that will give you 10% off any of my paid patterns on Etsy or Ravelry. So if Ravelry is not accessible for you, yes. Etsy is there. Um, what's your and then on both of those? I'm sorry? What's your username on both of those? You would have to know that. Um, on Ravelry, I am Nadira Tani. Oh. And on Etsy, my shop is Quirky Monday Crafts. Okay. I will so I try to keep everything consistent. Yeah. And I can, um, I'll send you a message with like all of the contact stuff. I'll put it on the screen. But, screen. Yeah. Ooh, I'm currently working on bags for my Etsy shop. Ooh. There have not been bags in my Etsy shop in a very long time because, you know, that, like I was saying earlier, the, the work-life balance has been just crazy. But I have cut all of the fabric for Christmas bags. Oh, yeah, Grinch. I actually did not cut any Grinch fabric, right? Who am I? But that's only because all the Grinch fabric that I have, I want to make a quilt. And I'm like, if I cut into it, I may not have enough for myself. <laughs> you need to make a quilt and then see what's left. I know. I need to cut the quilt pieces and then. But yeah. <laughs> so now I just have to get sewing on those. I cut, I have this thing where I cut way more fabric pieces than I am able to do. <laughs> and then I get overwhelmed and I'm like, why did I cut so many? I don't want to do it. A failure. <laughs> I do this to myself as well. Oh my gosh, my cheeks are aching. <laughs> and like, I do the same. Like I'll set a really high bar for myself and then yes. I'm like, I want to reach it. I'm like, well, I can't do it. Like when you made that, uh, that curtain, oh. I was watching you like this girl here. Them tiny little squares. I will pray for you. But <laughs> you finished it. And I was I was very impressed. I finished it because I didn't want to go and buy a curtain for <laughs> that window when it was almost done. But then I started a blanket version. I've got loads of the little tiny circles and I am not about to put that together anytime soon because the amount of ends. Those circles have got two ends and then per row, I think I, my blanket's gonna be like 
30 squares across. That's six, the end on one row. I'm not ready for that yet. I need a lot more prayers. <laughs> I would just, I, I'm the worst at, at weaving in ends. I'm the worst. Like any of my knit socks, none of those ends are woven and I just tuck them into the sock. Yeah. I do the same. Life is too short for weaving in ends. Weave it's a fringe. fringe. It's a fringe, it's an inner fringe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I have had so much fun chatting to you. I feel like we just should start a series, like every now and then. Yes. Chit Let me see. I still have the message that you sent me with like the questions. Let's see if we if we hit all of your. I don't think we did. Oh, it was in an email. Oh, did I close my email? What kind Maybe of shenanigans? About way because like I think one of the one questions like the worst thing about a podcast. I think that would be like the trolling and people turning. Yeah. Like, um. And then, oh yeah, we hit everything. Look at you. You better be organized, because I'm not. Like I didn't ask, have... like, here's the question, but I think we like flowed through it without the prompts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I want to share? Um... I don't think so. I think, for people who are considering starting a podcast, one of the, the things that, that I have heard or I've seen people say is there's already so many people podcasting. There's so many other podcasts out there. This is true, but your perspective is unique to you. Yes. And the, the, beautiful thing about being a person is that there's always going to be somebody who can identify with something that you're sharing yeah. and and identify with you in in a way that makes what you're saying important you know and even if there wasn't anybody somehow to identify with what you're saying it's still very important because it is what you're saying yeah. exactly. you know I don't think there's, I don't think it's oversaturated. Everybody's at home and they want stuff to keep them company. And seeing your part of the world right now is that escapism that they, you can't have because we can't just hop on a plane and be like, hi, like I'm coming to visit you. So I don't think there's too many, I, I don't think there's ever too many people podcasting because like you said, everyone's unique. Yeah, it's all different. It's all different. Just jump in. That's what I would say. Yes. Jump in with both feet. And just, yeah. I think overall it's fun to have a podcast. And although it's quite time intensive, it's rewarding in its own way. Even yeah. Without like the Google AdSense or people seeing your patterns. It's just nice to be able yeah. to talk about something that we yeah. so much. And earlier you said that um, one of the reasons that you started was because you don't have like fibery people around you. And I think that's, that's true for a lot of people. You know, we typically don't have like other knitters and crocheters living next door, you know, or that we interact with. I am the only one in my circle of friends who does anything yarny. So whenever I start talking, talking, whenever I start talking yarn, they're always like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. That's wonderful. Okay. Are you going to make me socks now? Can you make me this blanket that I saw on Pinterest? No. I can if you pay me. <laughs> and then they're like, wow. And then, like, I don't like people putting obligations on my time. I'm really like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. Like, I need to chill out. Yeah. But... It is definitely a way to be able to interact with other people who have the same interests as you. And also, I love how small this has made the world. Mm -hmm. You know, like just right here, like you're in the UK. Yeah. I'm in Florida. <laughs> yeah. There's like five hours between us. And we just what is that? <laughs> I just, I love that. I love that. And, um, 
my husband also gets a kick out of it because I'll tell him about, you know, oh, you know, this is this is what Heather's doing. She lives in the UK and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, you have friends in the UK? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Which without the internet, like we wouldn't have met each other because. Not ever. Yeah, which is just crazy. So it has made the world a lot smaller. And that's good because it means more people see the day-to-day life of more people. Yes. Like, I didn't realise before I started my podcast that the foods I eat are quite specific to the UK. Like, in my small, very ignorant mind, I just thought that everyone ate the same food. (laughs) And it wasn't until, like, I was um, eating, as I was growing up, I would eat at different friends' houses and they'd have different cuisines. Like my black family cooked differently to my white family without a doubt. Um, but then when I started doing the podcast, like people were like, what's a Yorkshire pudding and what's a roast dinner? Because in America, that's not things that you have. And here, like, What is a Yorkshire pudding? It's like a Sunday staple. Like we have Sunday dinner um, and it's like chicken and gravy like roast chicken, gravy, you have some vegetables, you have mashed potato, and a Yorkshire pudding is kind of like a pancake batter, and then you put it in like what you would call a muffin pan, you make the oil hot, you put it in, you put it in the oven, and it rises up, and it's called a Yorkshire pudding, and you cover it in gravy, and you eat it, and it's gorgeous, and that's just not something people do in America, and they look at me like that, like, hey... (laughs) I know. Like, so it's like bread? Yeah, basically. But you call it a pudding? I'm so confused right now. <laughs> pudding. I don't even know why. I'm going to Google it and figure it out. But like, I love this. The world is so different. <laughs> and you don't know about these things until you travel or watch other people's podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the, the difference in, like, in, in words that are chosen for things. Um, especially from UK English to American English. Oh my gosh, yes. There's so many like, what? What is that? You know what? You might be able to help me out with this. Okay. What is a conquer? A con- con- conquer? It falls off of a tree and it's hard and shiny and kids, when they're school kids, collect them and they put them on a string and they hit them as a game <laughs> and whichever one breaks is the loser. Um, and if you plant a conker, then a tree grows. Can you eat it? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think people eat them. Like we collect them as school kids, or they just fall off of the tree in autumn, in fall. And so it's kind of uh, like, kind of like an acorn, but not. Yeah, kind of. Oh, huh. they're like brown, hard, and shiny. So when I go for a yeah. walk, I'll see if I can find any because they fell off the trees not long ago and when I do my Yorkshire puddings I'm going to take some vlog footage <laughs> and then I'll be like this is all for you yeah like, yes. I think it's just because we have that type of tree that they fall off there's mm-hmm. one not far up from me so I'll go over in the morning it's like two seconds from my front door and I'll see it oh goodness because yeah. I I watch a few you know like UK vloggers and and one guy was talking about doing DIYs and he was collecting conkers and I was like what and he said do you have conkers in the United States or in the US and I was like I don't think so <laughs> but like, then I don't really know because it might have a different name here could because you call courgette zucchini and it's- yeah it's a courgette and you call like everything has a slightly different word like slightly different like, pavement and you say sidewalk and we say rubbish and you say garbage or trash like mm-hmm. they're so different yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i had asked uh someone i forget who it was but they were talking about their favorite sweet <gasps> as like their favorite candy mm-hmm. and so i was honestly thinking about this and I messaged her and I said, okay, this is going to be a really dumb question. But if a sweet is sour, is it still called a sweet? Yes. And she was like, yeah, but I've never thought about that before. <laughs> it is. I think you call yours candy, don't you? Yeah. Like, mm, candy. But even if they're sour, it's still a sweet. And my favorite sweets, oh my goodness, I love my sweets. Giant Skittles right now are my favorite. Wait a minute. 
giant skin. Okay, wait, wait. Like, I can't go get a bag. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some in the kitchen. I'm addicted. Giant. Oh my gosh. Get They're them. giant. What is this? I like, they are big. I'm so jealous right now. I love Skittles and I would love them to be big. They're really weighty, like, oh. um, I've stocked up on them because, because we order our food online and we do click and collect, you can only have like mm -hmm. a limit of the amount of stuff that you order. So I order them every time, even if I don't need mm -hmm. them. So I've got yeah. them. Um, and then I really like squashies, but I don't have any of them to show you. Um, I don't know what a squashy is. I'll have to take a video of them because I don't have them. But it's like, you know the drumstick lolly? Nope. Um, what? No. No. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll get some in my next shopping and put them in. It's like milk and raspberry flavored um, sweets. And then it's in a, oh, it's like the door. It's like, we make it into a sweet version as well as a lollipop. Uh-huh. So yeah, let me answer this door. Hello. I did tell you to wait. Yeah, you can come in though. <laughs> I'm supposed to be cooking and I haven't even started. Oh, well, don't let me hold you. I'm no. just enjoying um, all of this UK <laughs> sweet talk. This is so cool. I love my sweets. What about um, Turkish Delight? I've heard of it, but I've never had it. Okay. My partner Brad's just walked in. He hates it. And he was like, Ugh. <laughs> um, I feel like you guys have like the best candy, like the best sweets. But your bags are bigger than what we get. Oh, they yeah. should probably be smaller. We don't need so big. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if I have a favorite candy. You must. I like chocolate. Um, but I have, um, I've, I, I, what do you say? <laughs> biscuits and chocolate. Biscuits. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get him started. What about, so his favorite is white chocolate, and I'm gonna say malted milk biscuits or jammy dodges. At the top, custard creams. What's your favorite? Just thinking. I think that, okay. The fat, okay. <laughs> so a biscuit, <laughs> a biscuit is a cookie. Okay. No. Well, to me, I think a biscuit's a cookie. It's like a sweet little crumbly thing you eat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a biscuit is a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you call, like, um, mm, this is so stupid. <laughs> like a bread that you eat with breakfast that's not toast. A croissant or a bagel or a cob? Maybe. It, what's a cob? What does it look like? like a flat bread roll that we slice in half is called if you're from like one part of the uk it's a bap and if you're further down it's a cob <laughs> i think maybe that's what a biscuit is over here no <laughs> you're wrong like a biscuit is a biscuit and a cookie is a cookie and then bread is bread <laughs> Breakfast biscuit. We actually have bre breakfast biscuits, but it's like um, they're just packed full of energy to keep you going through the morning. Oh, I, I can't. Hold on. Yeah, okay, yeah. after I do this, then you know you're free to go. <laughs> oh my gosh! I love this conversation so much. I love this even more than like the yarny conversation. <laughs> okay. That. That's a 
that's a, either a scone or a cob. It looks like a scone to me. Oh, it might be a scone. We call them scones or scones, but it's like you put like jam, butter and jam on that. Or maybe yeah. it's a scone. Oh, because so, I never really knew what a scone was. That's one. The biscuit. Oh, no. <laughs> Biscuits are usually like something that you could dunk in your tea. And I don't think people in America do that, do they? Not really, but it would be kind of like shortbread. Yeah, like that's a biscuit. You can put it in your tea and then eat it. I think that's a you. Yeah, we just call it a cookie. Oh. A shortbread cookie. <laughs> what is the cookie over there? A cookie is like the Cookie Monster cookies. Like the cookie. Yeah. Um, that's a cookie. But if it's like shortbread, that's a biscuit. If it's a custard cream, that's a biscuit. All cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. oh, my goodness. This is so good. Okay. Well, Thank you so much for having me. I hope that our chat was productive. <laughs> it enlightened somebody. Because we somebody. Either come- that or people are just laughing at us the whole time. <laughs> Which I'm okay with. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. We will actually have to do this at some point again. Just because it's so funny. And just talk about food. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make some Yorkshire puddings and show you what they look like. <laughs> I am just, that blew my mind, legitimately. I thought it actually had, like, pudding in it. Well, I think in the old days, people used to eat them with pudding, sugar and jam on them in the old days to fill your belly up. So, like, poorer people would give that to their children first. Yeah, flour, eggs, and milk. It's just, like, pancake mix. I know, it's amazing. And, like, how can you not have one? (sighs) Yeah. I will, um, I'll send you the recipe and how I make <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to be like, American tries to make Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm like, you're doing it wrong, no! <laughs> That's uh, not what you're supposed to do. Yeah, like, I'll do the reaction video to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you so much for okay. all your time. Have a good rest of your day, afternoon. Yes, you have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, Tribe. I really hope you enjoyed that interview of me and Kalisha having a chat, of hearing the differences between how she runs her channel, how I run mine, and also all of the talking that we got into. I hope you really enjoyed that and that it has inspired you if you want to start a channel. Um, If you do want to start a channel, make sure you comment below with any other questions you've got. I'm going to put out another video on um, how I started my channel, the equipment that I use, um, my income reports from YouTube, so the money I make from Google AdSense, um, things I wish I knew when I started my channel, all those bits and pieces. So if there's anything in particular that you want to ask, drop that below and also make sure that you say thank you to Kalisha for taking this time to spend with us. Um, I have more, 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 more boss talks lined up. Just to let you know, there's about 10 actually of all different individuals who have turned crochet or yarn into their income. So make sure you click like, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.